Why would you bring an uh, outside solution if your job is really to help the country of operation? You know, we're a local company, we develop a local technology to empower, uh, to have empowerment on the African continent. And we know for a fact there's no other technology out there. So we're not just empowering, we have job creation, money circulate, inflow. And the answer from one of the, the NGO, or at least one of the contacts I had, was very simple. Uh, was that, listen, they don't always dictate who they can work with or not. When they receive donor money, that money comes with conditions. As long as it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you what? Strong. I did a, a very interesting vlog about how uh, development agencies, you know, they're not here to develop Africa. They actually use their own, the, the, the country taxpayer uh, money to, to fund those development programs in different countries. But, you know, one of their main goal is actually to open new market for businesses from their country. But what I, I, I realize also, NGO, international NGO have the same program. All right, let me give you a statistic. Less than 2% of the money International MGO brings in Africa actually goes to um, local enterprise. So 2%, so it, it's, it's, not by, uh, it's not by accident, it's by design. So they raise money from their country, they have donors from their country in programs and all those things, especially from the same countries and all those guys. But, um, and I'll, I'll share a story. So. You have a lot of NGOs that work in refugee camps, that worked in, uh, in rural areas for different programs, uh, empowerment, women empowerment, youth empowerment, blah, blah, blah. We, we talk to most of them. We always look for partners to minimize our cost, maximize our impact. And since we're a small company, you cannot achieve the impact we want to achieve with our partnership. And since they already have a footprint, on the ground, well, it's common sense. You got to work with partner instead of trying to build this this value chain yourself, and you're just going to be dead. So we work with a lot of NGOs, small, international, local, name it. They realize that, you know, when when we well, we realize that when we negotiating and all those things. A lot of time, NGOs do two things. Half of most international NGOs, half of the, their department job is just to look for funding. That's half of them. That's all they do, look for funding. But a lot of time, they don't have actual products or solution to implement on the ground. So they look for funding, they use staff to do training and some small stuff, uh, bring know-hows. It's usually knowledge transfer, technically that's what their strength is, content, but they don't have actual solutions like apps, hardware, if they want to solve connectivity, job creation, uh, what kind of job or what kind of small business, they don't have that. So we'd like the, 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 the link that is missing, right? Common sense, uh, at least for me, it is, you know, right? Ared, common sense, we're the only one-stop shop platform, we have a business model to empower people. So we negotiate, so every time we negotiate with international NGO, it's always the same thing. Yes, oh, that's a great idea. We're looking for something similar, blah, blah, blah. We need authorization from our headquarters and all for this project. So they have a lot of bureaucracy. And nine out of 10, I mean, literally nine out of 10, and I'm not lying, guys. It's always as, mm, we find a similar solution in our country and we decide to go with them. The company that kind of do what you're trying to do, uh, but not necessarily as in detail, but we decide to go with them. And it, I'm telling you, it's like, it's like clockwork, guys. 
And it's very interesting. So I never peeped that game. I never realized. And it dunked me because I, I, I've never understood. Why would you bring an uh, outside solution if your job is really to help the country of operation? You know, we're a local company. We develop a local technology to empower, uh, to have empowerment on the African continent. And we know for a fact there's no other technology out there. So we're not just empowering, we have job creation, money circulate, inflow. And the answer from one of the, the NGO, or at least one of the contacts I had, was very simple. Uh, was that, listen, they don't always dictate who they can work with or not. When they receive donor money, that money comes with conditions. And a lot of time, those guys, those donors, they also, they understand economics. I don't blame them at all. You know, we've been getting AIDS for, and uh, we've been having NGOs for how long? Uh, four, five, six decades since independence, at least, at least right after World War II. You know, that's when NGOs start really picking up. Do we really believe it's gonna change now? Especially when the model is not? Because you cannot, as a small company like ours, we cannot change their mind. We're too small, they don't care. Only government can come up with rules and regulations as 50, 60, 70% of your funding uh, has to be invested in local uh, solutions. You know, because we have tremendous amount of local solutions. We don't do that. You know? And until we change that, I don't see anything happen. That's the biggest problem. What's up everybody? First of all, thank you for watching all the videos. I'm working on a project right now that I'm really, really passionate about. It's called the 50K Challenge. And that's 50,000 copies we need to sell at the book. Out of every 20 sales, I'll be giving one book to a young entrepreneur or young students. And out of every 500 sales, I'll do a one week mentorship to a young entrepreneur. I truly believe with your support, I can achieve that goal, guys. So share the books. If you haven't got it, get it. If you don't like to read, buy it for somebody else. And please share it also on social media. Thank you.